Eight station years of data uh, looking at plant emergence at speed and depth. We're talking one centimeter depth. That's really, really shallow. And look at the amount. There's a, a hybrid, uh, open pollinators to blue. Purple. I'm colored black, so I have some problems there. But you can see we're getting 87 to 89% of the seed that went in making plants. That meant they had very good soil moisture at that low speed and low depth. When you get up here, even at the lower speed, but four centimeters isn't quite an inch, we're looking at still very, very good. And there's your line for 50% emergence. And uh, over here at seven miles per hour, we see a real drop off in the percent of seed making plants. So speed is important. I always tell guys, Hey, you have your hard man drive the tractor, you sit on the drill and see what's actually happening. There is so much bouncing going on and you start seeing, especially at the higher speed, you start seeing more seed and fertilizer mixed together if you're uh, side banding, uh, it starts to create a problem. Here's a picture of the plots from last year. Here's one centimeter, this is with an open pollinator. At four miles an hour at uh, four centimeters. What's four centimeters? That's uh, yeah, down there. And here's a lower, uh, higher speed, but at that shallow. And here's what happens at a little deeper depth at the higher speed. We start seeing a lot lower plant density. Uh, this is with the hybrid. The hybrids have a greater capacity. Uh, that's why at seven miles per hour, at, uh, there's not a heck of a lot of difference there, is there? This is from Neil Harker's work at Ag Canada at La Combe, and uh, I like those photos. I've got my own series of photos, and actually I think I took better photos. I should have put them in. And we start seeing this happen at the higher speeds. We start seeing blurry grows, dirt moving over the next shanks, and uh, not as good an emergence. We want it uniform. The, I, when I talked to one of the, well, probably one of the best canola uh, researchers in the world, I asked him, what's the ideal placement for canola? And he said, well, if you take a triangle, it would be three inches between plants. Plant here, plant here, and plant here. Oh, uh, we can't achieve that. Can we? Not with the drills we have. But that's equal distance between plants to reduce interplant competition and improve the yield capability of the plant. Here's same same speed at four and a half uh, field, literally side by side. This one is ideal plant density, and this one had a little more stubble. But he was going deeper, and it wasn't much deeper. It was only a half an inch deeper. But it did affect it. Still looks real good. But when you walk through it and do actual plant counts, it's a lot different than here. And the yield was substantially different, substantially lower on the right-hand side. We see problems with residue especially where we've gone to a lot of zero till. And we see it especially when we have a frost because there's no thermal heat in the ground because of the residue. And the, because there's no thermal heat to protect the plants, they're, they're killed out where we have a, a major frost. This was not frosted, but it's showing you there was a difference in plant density where there was clumps of residue out there. Yeah. Covered that on the yeah. Those are the kind of yield differences we see on seeding depth. Uh, it drops off pretty dramatically as we get lower. But it depends on the soil texture. If it's a sandy loam, it has really little resistance to come up. So it can come up from deeper depths. So you've got to look at your soil texture on it as well. Uh, this is looking at uh, this is two years of data now from Ag Canada, <coughs> Dr. Parker, 
And you can see over the three years <coughs> what happened. This is 150 seeds going in the ground at, uh, at seeding. And here's Goodyear, 2008, we had a very nice spring. 101 of those seeds made plants. Look at over here. It really dropped off. We were very dry in 2009 in the spring. And at that low depth, it made a bit of a difference. But look at it. Just going down a little deeper to moisture, we had a real drop off in plant uh, seeds making plants. Only 30. It's still enough to give you a reasonable yield. And I've got the yield data here as well. But look what happened when we get to that higher speed. This one, I don't, I can't explain. <laughs> Days to emerge. Uh, you know, reasonable seeding early. And, you know, 15 days to get out of the ground, not bad. But look at 2009 with those dry conditions. It took a long time, and the longer it takes, the greater the probability of seedling blight occurring. And there's our yield, pretty nice yields. Uh, even with those dry spring conditions, we we're still able to hit 92 bushes per acre. Uh, we dropped off. <coughs> on the lower depth and the higher speed. Uh, and 2010, uh, yeah, we had rain when we thought we needed it. But we had very dry spring conditions, and then it started raining. And then we had too much. But still, not bad yields. Uh, percent green seed, not an issue until this past year. <laughs> and it was simply the plants were much delayed on maturity, and we tended, I get a lot of reports from growers that uh, we tend to have more green seed in our Roundup Ready varieties than we did in the Bayer variety. And I still haven't got that figured out because when we do all our variety trial and look at uh, chlorophyll levels, it's usually not an issue, but last fall it was a major issue through that central Alberta area. <coughs> We don't see much difference uh, between tillage systems. We see a, a little bit better yield on our direct seeded on average or reduced tillage, but it's not significantly different. Uh, we're talking two, three bushels per acre. Those are pretty low numbers. That was just the, for the piece. Row spacing. Oh, I get more calls <coughs> about row spacing. It all hinges on your seedbed utilization. How much spread do you have? Uh, the old research work was showing that we had very little difference in yield between six and nine inch rows basically. But we started seeing a yield drop off at 12. With direct seeding, uh, get up to 12, there is a bit of a drop. And this is with a low seed bed utilization, 10% to 15%. Think of it this way. You, you've got a nine inch drill row spacing and you You've got a, a shank that's going to put it in and three inch spread. That's 33% seed bed utilization. You start getting up to this 16 inch and we're going to see a dramatic drop off in yield capability. Unless you've got a wide seed bed utilization. So that's got to be taken into consideration. We still have lots of broadcasting. Uh, it's really variable. <laughs> I always look at it from a risk standpoint. Uh, we're in a high rainfall zone at Lacombe, and it's a low risk. We see a lot of seed broadcast and incorporated. If it isn't incorporated, we are a mess. <laughs> it's that simple. But when we look at the research work, 50% of the time it yielded less than a one inch depth seeding. 11% uh, higher yield. <laughs> And 39% had similar yields to seeding dumps at one inch depth. So yeah, it can be done as long as you've got moisture. Uh, reseeding. This is some work that the Canola Council did. Pretty low yield because it's that old. Uh, here's May 6 seeding date, 26 bushels per acre. Uh, May 18th dropped. Uh, May 31st was okay. Reseeded was 27 really no difference than the May 6th, but you've lost a month. 
So that's why I am very cautious uh, when I go out and look at these fields that were damaged by frost. Do we really truly need to go in and reseed? Because all you know, you've got a rosette there, a little rosette. It's got a root that's about six inches long already. And to replace that by reseeding doesn't always work. It means proper scouting, just to determine that if you've got one to two plants per square foot. Um, here we've got a pretty good frost at three to four per square foot. Did it need to be reseeded? There's, there's that bottom one is what happened to that field by leaving it. Uh, a little later, and it went 38 bushels at two to three percent green. Not bad. That was two plants per square foot. <laughs> Funny how it So yeah, it's, uh, it's it's a very flexible plant we grow. Uh, I want to thank Sarda for inviting me up. I appreciate uh, being able to come up here.